What is going on guys? Today I'm going to do a video on how I edit as a hybrid photographer and I'm hoping this video isn't way, way too long, but we shall see on that. So the first thing that I do when I'm editing a shoot is I pull in my film scans and I make a collection called scans and I put them into that. And then I've got my digital files and I put that into a folder called raw. So the first thing that I do with my scans is I go through and I tag the photos that I'm going to use as references. So I use seven as yellow and I've always used seven as my references. I don't know why, but you can use what color you want. So here we go. I've already tagged these with yellow and all of these yellows are the photos that I'm going to be using as references to edit the digital. So that's all done. I've got like 23, so then I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at these and I'm going to edit my film. I don't do much with film, but I usually just give them a little pop. This is all from Photovision, which is my fave lab. And I usually just brighten them up just a touch and warm them up just a touch, but that's about it. And then I use a special good light preset on them and it's just a tiny, tiny little pop. And that's the before and after I don't do much, um, but that's about it. So I'll do that with all of my film. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is go back into my digital and I'm gonna do the same thing with digital. So I'm gonna go through and I, I'm going to use seven again to pick the photos that I'm going to edit first. And then after those photos get edited, I can just copy those settings to the photos around them. So anyways, I've got those all done too. And I've got my sevens here and I've got 25, I don't know why I have 25, but anyways, this is all shot with a Panasonic S1R, which is just an absolutely amazing camera, I love it. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my digital is I'm gonna go in and open a scan, and I feel like I like this one because it just represents a lot of the tones of the day. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick a digital that is the same as that, and I'm going to edit that one photo and I'm going to look at the presets that, I, that, that I'll use and I'll basically use that same preset on the whole shoot. Every now and then I will use a different one, but almost all the time I'll use the same one on all of them. So I'll just hover on it and look at them and like that's F1, F2, F3, F4, 5, and 6. And I think that F2 is the jam on this. So I'm gonna select F2, and then I'm going to match this one photo. And as you can see, I mean, that's about all I'm gonna do. That's crazy. And that looks like a really good match. So that's kind of all I do on this whole process. So. First of all, I know that I'm going to use F2 now on my whole shoot. So with that being said, I'll go back into my, just my raw files here. And I'm gonna take this photo and I'm gonna paste F2 onto everything around it. So here we go. And the only thing that I don't copy is white balance and exposure. And I'm gonna copy that. And also with sharpening, I usually use um, sharp low and I usually use film grain medium but it depends on what I'm shooting with the Panasonic I usually turn sharpening to zero and then grain uh, that's about good like that so that's all I do with my digital I'm gonna copy that again and then I'm gonna control a command a whatever and then I'm going to paste those settings across the whole shoot Okay, now that that looks good, I'm gonna select my first film scan in the series, and then I'm going to go to my digital, and I'm just gonna edit each photo. And usually all it's gonna take is white balance and exposure. And we should be about good with that. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna edit a few of those. That looks pretty good. I might take up the contrast a little bit on this guy. Maybe something like that. But that looks good. Then I'm gonna to go to my next scan, 
which is this one. Go back to the digital. Just tweak the white balance a little bit. Tweak the exposure. That looks good. Next film scan, we already did that one. And basically just tweak the white balance and exposure. That's about it. The beauty of good light is that it just doesn't take much on the sliders to get everything looking quite similar. I mean, it's just, it's easy, easy, easy. That one's good. Next one, I mean, this is a, this is raw. That's a raw file just with F2. And you can see <laughs> it's just, it's crazy, crazy close right out the gate. So I'll pull down the greens just a little bit and I might add a little bit of contrast on this guy, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And same thing, this one needs just to be warmed up a little bit. Needs to be a little bit more magenta. Maybe take the blacks down just a touch. Yeah, that's about it. Sometimes I'll pull up the blacks a little bit. Um, and that looks good there. Next one, same thing. Warm it up a little bit, add a little bit of magenta. Maybe about like that. You guys, I also edit with a Wacom tablet, which is amazing. Um, and I have the hotkeys set up to copy and paste settings. So that helps me a lot because I just, um, I can use that pen to this is how I change exposures. I use that pen to just pull down the exposure and move the exposure. And I don't think many people know about this, but you can pull the shadows down. You can pull the blacks down. You can adjust the blacks, shadows, highlights, and whites all in here. And if you double click, it just goes back to zero, just like that. So I'll pull the blacks down just a little bit. And that looks pretty, pretty good. That's about it. Same thing with this one. Take the greens down just a little bit to there. And that's pretty good. The blacks need to come down a little bit on here. And maybe shadows as well but that looks really good. Look at that before and after. I mean, you can see what highlights have come back into that bouquet. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. So this is all I'm gonna do with each photo is I'm just gonna pick my reference. I'm going to go in and tweak the white balance a little bit like that. I could take shadows up a touch and that looks good. Now this scan, I'm not a big fan of. So the thing about film is sometimes I'm going to use it as almost like an exact reference. And sometimes I'm going to use it just as a bit of a reference, but I know that my digital will kind of end up looking better. So that's about good on that one. You can see that this has a lot darker shadows and it's, it's, a, it's quite a contrasty image. Um, I could go and make it like that, but I kind of don't like it as much. So anyways, that looks good there. And then same thing with details right here. Take down the greens a little bit. 
Sometimes on details, I'll take the texture up a little bit because I find that scans have a little bit more texture in a situation like this. And I'll take the blacks down maybe a touch. And sometimes I'll take the shadows up a little bit. That's looking good. Look at that color, color, color. Beautiful, okay, that's good. On to this one. I think I'm gonna have to pull the contrast up a little bit on this um, digital file. Maybe something like that. Pull the blacks down a little bit. Somewhere in there. That looks pretty, pretty good. You can see the color looks pretty close. And a table shot, same deal. Maybe end up somewhere, something like that. Now again, I'm not gonna do this on a digital only shoot um, because I'm gonna have the color of film kind of in my head, but I mean, this is crazy. Look at, this is film on the left <laughs> and digital. Like what in the world? Perfect. And next one, pick this guy. If white balance was perfect on on cameras, I'm telling you it would take no time to edit with good light. It's crazy. It's about good. That's about it. Before and after. I'll take that all day long. Only two more. All right, here we go on this one. Same thing, pull the greens down a little bit, warm it up a little bit. And maybe pull the blacks down and the shadows down just a touch, maybe add a, just a pinch of contrast. But you guys, like, I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Look at the highlights. Y'all, this is amazing. Okay, what do we have? One more. Warm it up. Take the tint down a touch. Take the blacks down a touch. And that's pretty good. Okay, that step is done. Now the next thing I would do is I go back into my digital and I deselect my yellows and I'm going to go through and I don't have anything around that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a photo like this that we've already edited. I'm gonna select everything around it and then I'm gonna paste those settings, which I have, oh. I need to copy this and copy white balance and exposure. Copy and paste. And this is why I have that paste set up as a hotkey on my tablet, because then I can just paste those super easy. And then I'm gonna take these, paste that. This is like these around it. So I'll go here and here, paste that. And you guys get the idea. Basically, I just go through and take the reference photo, paste what's around it every now and then like that. Like the light changed huge on that. I think a door was closed. I don't know. So I'll have to go in and tweak that one also. But something like this, I'll just go through and select all those, paste. And again, there was a little bit of a uh, shift, but you get the idea. 
And like this is a lens, uh, I changed lenses on this one. So the exposure changed a bit. I didn't change my exposure. So I'll end up going through and making small adjustments like that. And the, the lens has a little bit of a different color as well. Anyways, there's that. I'll go through here, paste those. And this is why also shooting um, consistent exposure is so valuable to me because I know that I can go through and I can paste settings to photos around something because I know that I'm shooting everything around those, um, those images really close to the same. And if I was tweaking my exposure all of the time, then on the editing side, it would be much more of a complicated process. So, and that's also due to the S1 and the EVF just helps so much in that. Same thing here. I'll go through and paste this whole section there. You can see there was a big white balance shift though. What I'll typically do is go in and find the one that it changed a bit and I'll adjust that one. And then I will paste these guys again. And that looks good. Now on a photo that I don't have a reference, what I'll typically do is I'll go through and select um, a digital that I like, that I know that I've got my tones good. And then I'll go in and adjust that digital to match that one. About like that. And then I'll copy those guys. I know that this is all pretty similar light, so I can go in and paste all of those. And those should be pretty close. Same thing in here. I didn't shoot film at this spot, so I'll go in and tweak that a little bit. Maybe about like that. You guys, look at this color. This is the new F2, y'all. It is my fave good light preset at this point. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you get the point. I just go through and I select my yellows and I paste all the settings to the photos around them. And that's about it, man. Super, super easy. So I'll go through and same thing. Just paste all of that. On this one, I can go all the way over here. Crazy, crazy. Okay, that's about it there. And then these guys. Look good. You guys, that's it. That's all I do. Piece of cake and good light is just amazing with matching film scans and especially this new F2. Um, yeah, I just don't have to do much. I almost don't change sliders almost at all. And on the profile amount, I'm almost always in 100. Now, the only time that I do go down is I, if I start to get a little bit of a color shift that is distracting. Then I'll go down to about 90, 95, and that usually takes care of any type of funky color shifts. But that's about the only time that I change the profile amount. Um, I don't mess with vibrant saturation in all of that much because that's all in the profile. In tone curve, I don't touch much at all either unless I want to pull up the blacks a little bit. But you guys, that's it, man. I mean, I don't have any HSL changes on this as you can see. 
Um, my sharpening is at zero, which I find matches film a lot, especially with the Panasonic S1R because it's so bloody sharp. Um, I don't have any changes made in here. It's just, it's so simple uh, to edit with these. And yeah, if you guys wanna match film, I don't know, it doesn't get much easier than that. As far as I'm concerned, I've used so much and yeah, I hope that that helps you guys. If you have any questions, yeah, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Otherwise, that's it. Talk to you guys later.